chapter 29, beginning at verse 15, and we're going to read through verse 30. My admonishment to you today is, please step to the front. Amen. Genesis chapter 29, 15 through 30. And the King James text reads in this fashion, And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother or my relative, in the Old Testament times it was common for them to use the language, You're my brother, meaning your family. Shouldest thou therefore serve me for nothing or for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy, da thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the true love he had to her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening. Now, I'm going to stop for a second because you've heard me talk about this many, 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 many times. No wedding ceremony is taking place. There is no wedding ceremony. They're having a celebration. They're having a feast, what we would commonly call a wedding reception to celebrate the union of these two. But their union occurs when they go in one to another and consummate the relationship. Okay, and I only say that because so many people in so many churches are condemned because they're living outside of legal marriage when in Scripture no such thing ever existed. If they're living together as married, if they've consummated their relationship, they are married in the sight of God, period, case closed. So why churches stick to Roman tradition and condemn people is foolishness. So let's go on from here now. And it came to pass in the evening that he, meaning Jacob, took Leah, uh, I'm sorry, Laban, uh, took Leah his daughter and brought her to him, meaning Jacob, and he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpha his maid for an handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah, and he said to Laban, What is this thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. And Jacob did so, and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah his handmaid to be her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. It's kind of a comp the way the King James reads, it, it's not real clear, is it? But I think we'll be encouraged by some things I have to say today. Would you bow with me, Master? We thank you, God, for your word today. You have a message, God, for your church at this hour, and we desire to hear it. Lord, we ask that the anointing would flow this hour like a mighty river. Lord, lift us up and encourage us today with your word. Let your word go forth. And as the word of God declares, the anointing is like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Break the yoke and break the bondage upon the souls of so many. As this word is delivered to them this day, those in this room, those that will one day uh, possibly hear this message on tape, those, Lord, that will hear it on the internet, let every soul that hears be delivered and set free by this wonderful truth that you're about to share with us today. For we ask it in none other than Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated and amen.
Okay, the story is quite simple. A man by the name of Jacob, who is, of course, the only child of a man we know as Abraham, and Isaac, Isaac has Jacob, he's not the only child, but he's uh, one of the children of Isaac's. He's one of the descendants of Abraham, one of the people of promise that God has promised. God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. And Jacob was one of the twelve sons of Isaac. And he would be one of the fathers of the twelve tribes of Israel. And uh, I'm sorry, he would be the father of the twelve tribes. Boy, am I getting confused today. Jacob would become the father of the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay, there we go. I know I might get there somewhere along the line. And uh, Jacob falls in love with a young lady that belongs to an uncle of his, a daughter of one of his uncles. And he agrees to work for this uncle for seven years in an effort to attain this young lady as his wife. And he works then for seven years to attain this young lady, but on the morning after the wedding night, as it were, uh, he comes in and finds that his uncle has beguiled him. And instead of Leah, the one that he loved and the one that he was working for for seven years, all of a sudden he was laid next to Rachel, the older of the daughters. Or vice versa again, because I'm just... Just consider this whole message talking in tongues, okay? It requires interpretation. So he realizes he's laying down with Leah rather than with Rachel, who is the object of his affection. And then he goes to his uncle, and his uncle said, Well, if you want to work for me for seven more years, then you can have the younger of the two as well. So poor Jacob, it is Jacob, am I right about that? All right. Okay. We're not talking about Abraham or Isaac or Methuselah or Hondo or Haptai or anybody else, right? Okay, it's Jacob. Just want to make sure. Y'all got to help me today now, okay? So Jacob works for yet another seven years in order to attain his love object, the true woman of his desire, which in this case is Rachel, I think. Yes. Okay. So you got the story. That's the basics of the story, right? Yes. Well, there is a very common and popular movement within the Christian world today that preaches Israel is God's favored people, and as such we should do all that we can to be a blessing and a help to Israel. But my friend, I'm going to get right to the meat of this message so you can get blessed real fast and get happy real fast, okay? I want you to understand before you leave this place this afternoon that Israel is Leah, hallelujah, and the church of Jesus Christ is Rachel, glory to God. Israel should be seeking our favor, glory, and not vice versa. Come on now. Israel ought to be inviting the church of Jesus Christ to come in and do whatever you want to do. Preach whatever you want to preach. Say whatever you want to say because we need the blessing that's attached to the church of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Because the first wife is not the wife that God wanted. Hello now. He wanted the second. It was the second. It wasn't the law that saved. It was the covenant that God made with humanity through the blood that was shed on Calvary. Glory to God. Woo! Are you catching that now? You understand the concept of what I'm trying to tell you? You see, the story, the story of Jacob's experience with Leah and with Rachel is not there by accident. It is there by divine design. God has placed that story in Scripture for a reason. You see, the sad thing is today that while many preachers who are preaching this message about how Israel is God's favorite,